Supporting your local news, Air Park Canterbury, Logistics Drive and Parking Island off Rusty Road. And joining me this evening is new council boss Mary Richardson and Christchurch Mayor Phil Major. Good evening to you both and thank you for your time. Good evening, Chris. Phil, I'll start with you first. What made, and this is slightly awkward for you, Mary, so just pretend you're not there, what made Mary the ideal choice for this role, Phil? Well, what, what we did, we went, we went through the process. At the start, Mary didn't apply for the job. We went through the process of 37 people and the councillors, we all got together, but we couldn't, we couldn't come to a clear decision. So we asked Mary if she would apply just for a two-year-old, not a five-year-old, and she said yes, but to be very clear, she went through the same process as the other candidates. Mary, you initially ruled yourself out. So what ultimately led to you to accept this position? Okay. Look, I um, initially ruled myself out because when I um, stepped into the interim role, I wanted the councillors to be confident that I was making decisions because they were the right decisions and not because I was in a six to eight months job interview. Um, so I wanted that to sort of be clear from the start. Um, I also... Um, didn't didn't think I had another five years in me. I've been at council for uh, this time around for ten years, and I thought it's always good to get fresh blood and fresh ideas in. So um, I, I, those were the sort of two primary reasons. One because I said I wasn't going to, and my integrity is very important to me. And two is that I didn't uh, wasn't interested in a five year term. So when I was able to discuss with uh, the mayor about the possibility of doing a shorter term, um, that's uh, when I decided to. And also, just lastly, is um, I owe the council a lot. The council gave me my first real job, uh, you know, many decades ago. Uh, I've be, I've um, come back to council several times, having left um, uh, Christchurch and all left the country and come back, and they've always re-employed me. Um, and I love working here. Great people. It's fantastic to be serving the people of Christchurch, being a public servant and serving the city. So who wouldn't want this job? You say integrity is important to you. Did I read somewhere that you took a $100,000 pay cut? Uh, yep, that's that's correct. Well, I'm happy to take that money, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's really important. Uh, as I've said many times, I'm a public servant. I uh, think it's an honour to serve the public. Um, and I also um, am very mindful that the ratepayers who pay uh, my salary um, are, you know, facing hard times at the moment and financial pressures. So that was just one sort of uh, one thing I could do to try and uh, reduce. And we thank you for that. Mm. Phil, what qualities uh, does Mary possess that really set her apart from the other candidates? Um, well, even if any of the other candidates got in, there's always an upheaval that follows with the staff. Now, the staff over the last few years have been a bit um, gun shy, for want of a better word. We've had we've had a bit of upheaval around the place, and Mary certainly brings um, stability, and that and that's certainly what we're after. The the whole place is running very well. At the moment, very happy place. Mary, when it comes to maintaining morale, there's always, you know, leaks in the paper suggesting morale at council is bad, but this happens at every major organisation. It's nothing new as far as I'm concerned, but is it your responsibility or Phil Major's responsibility to increase the morale at council? Um, I think it's every staff pe person's responsibility to increase this, uh, morale at council. Um, we, and that starts for me. Um, through to uh, our executive leadership team, through to our heads of service, our leaders, and and our staff. Like it's it's our responsibility to make this a good place to work, and it's our responsibility for ensuring we're doing the best for the people of Christchurch. So um, I take it, you know, uh, King Lear's as um, a big responsibility um, that I have, and that people who are happy work better and do more and go that extra mile. Um, I know that Phil does contribute uh, a lot to morale. He's walking the floors, he's meeting with staff, he goes out and visits staff, 
He is always encouraging and supportive of uh, the work when they when they meet. And we're both going out this afternoon for yeah. a bit of a round the traps. So um, yeah, so it's, I think it's a joint responsibility, but I think also every staff member council has to take some sort of responsibility oh. for that. Those resident surveys that come out are they sort of I mean, almost twice a year, aren't they? Um, their perception, though, with residents is they don't feel engaged in the democratic process, and there is a perception that council decisions. Uh, a predetermined on projects. How are you both going to address that? Because that does appear to be a major concern. Either of you can answer that. Okay. Um, I, look, I do, uh, and this isn't an excuse for this, but um, this is a phenomenon of uh, democracies all around the world, is that people are sort of in some ways losing confidence in them. In Christchurch, um, I think we've had a history of having a really strong commitment to end relationship with the council where we were, you know, it was known as the People's Republic of Christchurch, the people defended uh, its council. We have lost that over the last few years, but we are putting huge efforts into uh, re-engaging and giving people confidence. And things that we've done about that is some of the stuff around our park staff. We're bringing our parks, that we brought our park staff and back yeah. into council. That means that all when people uh, encounter somebody in the parks, they're encountering a council park ranger. They will talk to them and engage them in the process, run volunteering days and actually have that interface and be able to answer questions about the wider council. We've increased the people in our local community boards. Uh, so again, they uh, can interface because what people have confidence with is the last person they spoke to at council. Mm -hmm. And so if we can have more people engaging face-to-face -face or on the phone or just out in the community, that I think will make a difference a lot more than any PR we put out. One, one of the other good things that's happened, Chris, is we're now doing uh, our briefings in public so that we're, yes. we're putting more stuff out. There's a hell of a lot less stuff in the public excluded because we want to be as transparent as we possibly can to let people have it if they want to watch it. Yeah. Um, in some ways, you could say if they've got nothing better to do with their life than watch a council briefing, they go for their life, but it's all there and they can um, take part. In other words, you may have to, you, I now have to watch uh, twice as much YouTube videos at one o'clock in the morning as I used to. But anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> let's discuss uh, uh, quite an important topic. I know there was an announcement yesterday, the treatment plant. Uh, it's expected to take three years before it becomes operational again. Phil Major, are you concerned about the potential cost escalations during that period? Because at the moment, you know, you got the $85 million insurance payout, but that falls well short of the operational expenses, doesn't it? Yes, but in the in the long term plan, we allowed for we'd already priced out what it was predict, projected to cost, and we've we've allowed for that. But one of the things is, we could have taken the insurance money and rebuilt it the way it was. Now I've lived down there. I know what it's like. I actually helped build those things forty five years ago. If we wanted to have the same um, odor for people down there for the next fifty years go ahead and build new um, treat, uh, new trickling filters. But we owe it to the people, spend a bit more money and have state-of-the-art stuff. It is it is proven around the country. Mungary used to have our old system and they built activated sludge. Problem solved, people are moving back there. That's what I want for the East. So we use this opportunity to build. It'll cost a wee bit more, but we certainly owe it to the people over there. You well, say there'll be... There'll be so, yeah, go ahead. Um, picking up on that... Um, cost escalation we are going we're looking at having early contractor involvement in this project so we've got we've had a couple of QSs looking at the modeling and the figures uh, so they are checking and look at testing those figures out all the time that we have looked at we have got our own uh, engineers uh, working on it and we are going to be looking at having early contract involvement those are the things that actually uh, enabled us yeah. with the stadium for example to be bringing that in on, on time and on budget is because you get the contract involved early. Um, so th those initiatives try and keep, ensure that we can keep the cost down for it and lock in a price early on. So, so, just so, so you can lock in a price that says here's the X amount of money for the contract that you get no more and you'll be penalised if you can't do this within three years? Uh, we uh, we haven't decided the exact yeah, methodology, yeah. but it's probably we will look at a design build, which yes. is always a better model Far to better. go. 
Yeah. Okay. Speaking of cost escalations, uh, just quickly, a few extra comments. The court theatre costs are expected to rise. I mean, are we talking significantly? I know you can't talk too much about this because of what commercial sensitivities, but what can you tell us? Because, you know, some are suggesting it's it's quite a high escalation. Uh, we, we're uh, still looking at the cost in that negotiation, so we can't really uh, talk about it. In the scale of the overall project, it's not significant. Uh, this is a significant uh, build. It's going to be the best theatre in New Zealand. Um, we always knew going into it, money was tight, uh, but we can't really talk about the cost. No, the, I understand. The Central City Business Association, I was yeah. uh, surprised at their call to cut council funding, considering the amount of funding they've got. Phil, they seem a bit precious. They seem a bit precious as if they, they're the mafia that run the city and, and they seem a bit concerned that a couple of additional food trucks is going to wreck their business. What do you say? Well, what, what, I don't think it's been sold particularly well from the art centres side of things. When you hear that it's going to be um, uh, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, um, with tw- it was 35, now down to 27, I think, food trucks, 33 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that would light anyone's match, I'm sure, because um, people that have uh, put their heart and soul and hard in life earnings into um, uh, hospo in the in the terrace can see someone just rock up with a, um, and I'm not saying that I'm not against food truck people, um, that they can just wheel in their um, caravan and start selling stuff um, at a lot less uh, input price. So, there's room for it all over the place. It's going through the process at the moment with uh, for resource consent, so it'd be interesting to see what pops out the other end. But having to engage with the arts centre, they should actually sit down and have a bit of a yarn together and just see if they can uh, yeah. work I mean, out. That's, that's surprising that they didn't bother to even speak to anybody at the arts centre. They just go along to a council meeting and demand to have their funding cut. I mean, come on, that's not how you, we deal with things. We, we talk, don't we? Yeah. I, I think both the arts centre and CCBA should actually... Uh, reach out to each other, have a conversation. We're going to chat to them today to say, look, why don't we get together around a table and find work out a win-win. When do the art centre need these food trucks? Uh, are they going to really be competing at, t- at times? Or, um, and how do we give them the greatest flexibility but also not uh, be you know, too hard a hit mm. on the... The cruise ships are returning to the city, but there's a lack of buses uh, for the passengers. Uh, what are your thoughts on putting on buses? ECAN said no this time because they want to save money, which is kind of weird because you would have thought in order to keep the peace, you'd keep these um, these buses on. And by all accounts, you know, according to the Christchurch NZ survey, uh, these cruise ships do wonders for the economy, but you still got the upset people of Littleton, don't you? The um, last Over the last two years, Christchurch NZ uh, still... Um, committed to using the same system we had for the last couple of years. We have got 20% less cruise ships this year, and next year is 20% less yeah. again because uh, cross ships, uh, sorry, New Zealand and Australia is a very expensive place to chug your ship all over the, the countryside so or the world. Um, so, so it is less. Uh, there are going to be a couple of days when I think there's a boat called the Ovation of the Seas, which is very big, and that's going to cause us a lot of grief. But... Um, Christchurch NZ are working to do it. it. It is great to have the people come straight off the bus into town. They're in town for longer. There's a chance to get money out of their pocket. Um, you see the queues on the tram. The, the oh, I love it. It's, it's, a lo- it's a lovely vibe when you see, um, you know, people out and about in the central city and they they look so engaged. And it actually it makes everybody else, I think, feel engaged and proud of their city when you see all those people off the boat. Mm-hmm. So, so we've just got to make sure. I want people to go away from Christchurch, cruise ship people go away from Christchurch and say, wow, what a great place, tell all their mates, and um, they come over mm-hmm. and uh, do the same thing. So it's, we've got to make sure it, it doesn't upset the people of Littleton, for one, or the, or the patrons coming over on normal buses. So Christchurch NZ, I am told, are working very hard to make sure we don't have grief. Okay, just finally, Mary, what's your message to, to the good people of Christchurch as the new boss of, I suppose, is it the second largest organisation in the South Island, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I, look, well, goodness, my message my message is uh, council is here to serve you as the people of Christchurch to the ratepayers. We're very mindful that we uh, you pay you pay our bills um, and we are going to get value for money for you. Nice. 
Christchurch Mayor Phil Major and the sort of new council boss, Vera Richardson. It's nice to speak with you both. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, buddy. (laughs) 